five, four, three, two, one. Hey everybody, how's it going? Storm 14 here and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we're going to be reacting to the film theorist, is one of his newer videos, the film theory of the Mario movie, that Mario is immortal. Now, this is kind of a strange theory, I guess, to talk about. I mean, simply put, and you just do an infinite one-up glitch, I'm guessing, like in the games. I mean, I assume you would do it in the movies as well. But I'm curious to see what Matt is going to talk about, since, again, Mario movies is a pretty topical movie right now. Let me tell you, I hope you guys like the reaction. Make sure to support film theorists as best you can. Make sure to support my reaction if you like my reaction. With that being said, let's see why Mario is truly immortal. In three, two, one. It's my wild swing for the fences theory yeah. here is that this Super Mario movie is gonna be a musical. Peaches, peaches, peaches. I mean, it was. Nailed it. You were right. Fun fact, that song Peaches? <laughs> yeah, but that, that was kind of the only song, though. for the Best Original Song Oscar. Academy Award <laughs> really? songwriter King Koopa. Oh, that's, that's nice hilarious. Movie, doesn't it? Hello, Internet. It's-a me, a film theory. The show that Hello, definitely beat the theory. obstacle course on the first try. So, the Super Mario Brothers movie came out, and let me just say it, right. it was a blast. Was it was it very fun. Was it Kino, as the kids online say? No, obviously not. The pacing was a bit uneven, the random 80s pop song inserts just yeah. didn't work, and Peach's motivation for taking Mario with her on the adventure were weaker than a stack of Goombas. But yeah. darn it, if I didn't have a smile plastered across my face the second the GameCube jingle played as a yeah. cell phone ringtone. Or when yeah, the that was really platformed good. their way through a 2D construction uh -huh. site. Or when the DK rap kicked into high gear. I know, that was the best part. I love that. So DK. awesome. On that topic, though, Donkey that was Kong. probably my biggest complaint about the movie. The creator what? of the DK rap isn't credited. Yeah, well, all the other songs oh. with their writers and musicians properly credited, the it DK isn't? rap is just from Donkey Kong 64. Real oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's I mean, just I know Seth not Rogen fair. Said, Objectively, one of the worst rap songs of all time. But that doesn't mean that the man behind this masterpiece, hey. epic game composer Grant Kirkhope, should be overlooked. Artists deserve to be credited for their hard work, and that includes Indeed. the DK why are we talking about the DK rap? No matter what Seth Rogen thinks about it. The snub was obviously enough to upset Grant. So, here's what I propose, loyal theorists. Let's work together to change the Mario movie. If you okay. have yourself a Twitter account, go and use that toxic platform to do some mm -hmm. good today. Tweet at Speaking Universal, of which, I actually made a Twitter for Storm Degree. Picks, so go check my Ask Twitter out if you want. We can talk about this. release of the Mario movie to include all the proper credits for the writers and performers mm -hmm. of the DK rap. And make sure go do that, the everyone. hashtag save the DK rap so we can get this puppy trending. If it gets mm -hmm. enough attention, if media outlets and YouTubers and streamers start making <laughs> enough Markiplier. noise for the story, maybe Grant <laughs> and everyone else who worked on this thing will get the credit that they deserve for Indeed. writing a song that so many people love or at least me it was i was so hyped when they played this i will I know i couldn't believe I it myself I'm not usually the type to get really excited about nostalgic like member berry stuff but man mm -hmm. that was an easter egg i did not see coming and it hit hard Neither did I. beyond the music the missing credits and the beautiful animations we all know what i was really there to see the lore right. let me tell you there friends there was so much in this thing we hear yeah, it but there was very little lore wise all that was there was kind of peach's origin and that was about it to me frame so super jump on that subscribe button right now so you get notified of when all those episodes come out already done it. today in true video game fashion we're going to be speed running our way through four mini theories that may just change the way you look at these core oh, so Mario we're doing four mini theories forever. not just today one? we're covering everything from peach's mysterious origins and the twisted logic of the mushroom kingdom to okay. the realities of the wider meta mario verse so suck uh -huh. down a mushroom and design yourself a cart friendos let's -a go <laughs> so ironic let's kick things off with theory number one you cannot die in the mushroom kingdom one subtle detail right. that I think most people overlooked in this new movie is how they visualize the damage that Mario is taking. Through all of the punishment that he takes in the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario comes away basically unscathed. True. For instance, in the arena battle against Donkey Kong, Mario gets rocked. He's grabbed, smashed, tossed, True, slammed, and, he, and, and, and he doesn't look bruised or battered or bleeding and at all. his body reflects none of that damage. He is mm -hmm. literally on the verge of passing out. There's not a scrape or bruise on him, either True. during or after the fight. Big deal, right? It's a Mario movie. What do I expect? It's not like they're going to show the main character bleeding or something. I mean, they did Except show DK exactly getting scratch marks on his face, so maybe. Fight. During the final battle, all the characters are sucked back out of the warp pipe and launched into Brooklyn. True. But here, we once again see Mario taking a lot of hard knocks. Except this time, his body is showing all the damage.
damage, complete with a I black see. eye and a bruise on his cheek. I mean, these sorts of design choices aren't made casually, especially for big feature film collaborations between two companies I like mean, this. I guess and that's true. Especially that's when interesting. one of those companies is Nintendo, one that's so protective of their characters that they gave mm -hmm. Disney notes about how Bowser would hold his teacup in Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> it's also not like Bowser was rougher with Mario out here than anything we saw happen inside the Mushroom Kingdom. There are multiple mm, occasions guess. where both Mario and Luigi probably should have died during their adventures. Adding to this idea, early yeah. on in the movie, we see Bowser uses flame breath on a disobedient Koopa. But instead of well, killing him, this act... Wait, first of all, he wasn't disobedient. All he did was ask a question. <laughs> he... He just asked, what if she says no? And then uh, and vaporized him. Scorches off all his outer flesh, transforming that Koopa from a turtle into a Which, by the way, is a total what upgrade for him, because now he really can't die. seem to act differently across the different worlds or kingdoms mm -hmm. of the Mario universe. And that, for whatever reason, the Mushroom Kingdom is one where your spirit or living self is somehow contained within the bones of your body. What right. this tells me is that in the final act of the movie, as Luigi is lowered down into the pit of lava yeah. and nearly burns to death, what really would have happened if that scene had continued would have been him turning into a living skeleton rather than immediately Maybe, yeah. death. Still a downgrade from fleshy human status for sure, but hey. You know, one thing I did kind of notice because it was a small detail about it is that the case, how it got out is, I mean, by now you've watched the movie, so you're not going to, so I'm, I'm guessing spoilers over the thing, but after this scene, like, the cage is partially melted, and then he climbs up on it. How, first of all? He would have been absolutely singed by the melted cage Climb, trying to climb on top of it. Just saying. That was another, like, inconsistency I saw. Hey, at least it's not, not death, death. So take a chill pill there, Luigi. Death only appears to be permanent if it's out in the real world. Theory number two. Does Did you notice too. the cavalcade of Nintendo references that are packed into this movie? Yeah, of like the coin block ATM. To notice them. There were so many in this thing that the new Rockstar's Easter egg video that breaks this puppy down is going to be longer than the actual movie. Some of my personal really? favorites. Obviously, the songs I mentioned earlier, like the DK That's rap. That's really also cool. the Super Mario rap from their True. old TV but show the that Mario was commercial. Oh, we the Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. yeah. All, right, All the game. construction signs and <laughs> as soon as I start characters on them, that's really fun. There's the shot of Mario versus Bowser playing like it's a KO in Super Smash at the end. And that moment that Mario defeats Bowser yeah. by launching him with his tail. A direct callback to Mario 64. Yeah, there's but a lot of the references non -Mario game references that got me the most interested. Mario has a toy R-Wing model from Star Fox in his True, room. he was there's playing Kid Icarus as well. He's about the to punch say out it. Pizzeria is a big old nod to the boxing yeah. adventures of Little Mac, which is also fitting since Mario was the referee of that original game. Right. There's also an Ice Climbers Easter egg on one of oh, the really? awnings of the streets of Brooklyn. There's the whole scene of him playing Kid Icarus, yeah. which we're going to talk about a lot more later. But to me, it's what isn't there that stands out the most. In a movie that's literally a Nintendo victory lap, mm -hmm. crammed full of every IP they got, the omissions yeah. are telling. Did you notice the distinct lack of anything related to Zelda, Metroid, Pokemon, Kirby? Well, that tells me that Nintendo has carved those IP out to shop around. I suspect that according to I mean, the contract, they already did it with anything Pokemon, that appears so... in this movie would have to have you could be right about that, Matt. In partnership with Illumination. And since those are the main IP that Nintendo is lining up to continue their multimedia movie push, mm -hmm. keeping them out was an intentional choice to have them remain as free agents. It probably was, actually. The Mario movie is literally Honestly, I would kill to see a Legend of Zelda movie. The whole thing begins with Mario and Luigi talking to Foreman Spike about their construction jobs right. and being Foreman part of the Spike. wrecking crew. And it all ends with Bowser's wedding where he wears the exact outfit from Mario Odyssey. Right. Basically, this the thing most is recent Mario game still. Mario across and the it's years, been over five years. Years, Nintendo, and what the hell? Practically every power up you'd want to see in this thing mushrooms, stars, fire right. flowers, sure, that's to be the expected, cat bell but also as well. mini mushrooms, tanuki suits, ice flowers, the freaking cat suit. That made yeah. me wonder where could they possibly go next? When your first film is literally a highlight reel of 35 years worth of games, yeah. what else can you possibly Plus, we also do? made well, Mario Kart too. With Bowser so. temporarily out of commission, the next one has got to star Wario and our meme lord and savior Waluigi. Or. It could start with a Mario Galaxy sequel, maybe. That's what I wanted, a Mario Galaxy sequel, but I don't think we're going to be getting that. And nab Yoshi eggs from Yoshi's Island. That one seems like a no-brainer. That could be an interesting one. In there for good measure. There was actually that, another reference they had. Baby Mario and Luigi. Galaxies, where finally I'd expect we meet our last and most important character, Rosalina. And yeah, it's then, that's what I want to see. The third movie of this trilogy where we'll be revealed Peach's origins. Which then brings us to theory number three. Peach is a star. During a scene in Act 2, Peach is Mario, a star. Peach, and Toad are on their way to try and recruit the Kong army against Bowser's invasion, the trio right. spend a night in a field. 
field full of fire flowers. Mario and Correct. Peach use the opportunity to do some character development, telling each other yeah, and very, the audience about their backstories small and motivations. Very small character development, but it and works. And it's here that Peach reveals that she doesn't know where she's from. True. The only thing that she does know is that it's not the Mushroom Kingdom. It's right. here that we see her earliest memory, arriving in the Mushroom Kingdom from a pipe as an infant and then getting adopted by the Toads. Mario yeah. wonders if Peach could be a human from his world, but given the way Peach reacts to this question, I kind of doubt it. She just kind of softly hmm. smiles, turns away, looks up at the night sky and says, it's a big universe out there. Yeah, There's which I thought was going to be a... No, no. I thought it was going to be a nod to Super Mario Galaxy. But they didn't show any hint trailers to it. Which I'm pissed off about. That right there isn't a giant neon billboard spelling out theory bait. I don't yes, know what Yes, exactly, so Obviously, Matt. it seems like they're I'm setting up you. some future films to explore Mario Galaxy stuff. That's what I want! It's going to be directly related to Peach's backstory. But I, I was hoping we'd see Rosalina at the end, Hear me maybe. Out on this, but what if Peach is literally a humanoid star? One of the superstars that's somehow taken human form. Might sound like a stretch, but let's look Why at some of the evidence. Why would you think if that? If we look back at that scene where Baby Peach arrives in the Mushroom Kingdom, there's lots of little yeah. details that's start adding to the theory. Firstly, Peach arrives out of a pipe that's constantly glowing, unlike Mario, who arrives in a pipe that flashes as it spits him out, but then turns entirely dark. That I mean, right I there guess. tells me there's some really powerful magic on the other side of that pipe. And the most powerful thing that we well, see in this world was clearly the, the same pipe. And wouldn't you know it, they glow, just like the pipe. Secondly, the skirt that Baby Peach is wearing in this scene is covered in a repeating pattern of stars and moons. A character's right. design in an important flashback like this likely had input from everyone up the chain of command in both she probably had Nintendo. a love for so this space, detail is maybe. something that they 100% wanted Or maybe it was Thirdly, just like Peach night is clothes. clearly powerful. Not only <laughs> is she a capable warrior, but it also appears like she's always been powerful. And she was able to do the obstacle right. course that Mario struggles with. Well, she said she learned try. how to do it, the and she was raised on it. I mean, she didn't get it the first Mario try, though, so maybe. The power of the superstar at the end of the movie. Also, this is a bit of a minor point, but I figured I should mention it. We also see both baby Mario and baby Luigi. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Both of them have these weird little beady eyes. Basically just pupils right. without the white sclera around it. But baby Peach, her eyes are fully formed. They're big and they're blue and they have a giant okay. sclera. Probably has more to do with being consistent with the already existing designs of the baby versions of I these think characters that is what it video is. games. But it does certainly add more evidence to the Peach isn't human pile. The babies that I we mean, know are maybe. humans have eyes just that look maybe. this way. And the babies that I mean, baby Bowser human, is the same way. Just look at Bowser space, Jr. Like this. Another big point here. When Peach first meets Mario, she excitedly asks him, You're a human. You are a human, right? Before yeah. commenting that she thought he'd be bigger and asking where he came from. But mm -hmm. obviously that then begs the question, how does Peach know what a human is? For someone who grew up with a race of fungus people since she was a literal infant, it's a weird piece of knowledge to I have. Mean, that is the a, bigger issue here though is that kids that is an interesting their memories. One. At a I certain mean, point in childhood, you should- To be fair, she didn't look like she was an infant necessarily when- She looked like she was like a- almost like a one or two year old, so- I don't know. I mean, then again, isn't that, that is what an infant is, Bob. My god, you're stupid. Forget what I said, I wasted time. Usually around the age of three, when they become verbal, they undergo what's known as childhood amnesia, the natural and gradual loss of memories from the first few years of life. In this scene, we see Peach using a pacifier, but also able to walk. Right. Now, human babies begin walking anywhere between 10 and 18 months, and pacifiers can honestly hang around as long as parents are willing to let their kids use them. The long and short of this is that Peach in this scene is mm -hmm. probably around the age of two. And even if Peach were okay, a human so and knew about right. it at this age, that knowledge would likely have been lost as part of the childhood amnesia process. Instead, Maybe. the knowledge yeah. of what a human is seems more like some sort of innate knowledge that an intergalactic sure. traveler might have. You know what's also kind of interesting is that, weirdly, Bowser and Kamek knew this too. So, like, so there's also could be another theory, like, why do the Koopas know what humans are, you know? Because th they should never be able to see them if Peach and Mario were the only ones who entered. So, I'm curious as to why Kamek and maybe Bowser knew, because... We do remember. That is an interesting idea, though. Or at least someone who's gotten a lot of knowledge about the different galaxies and the races that are contained therein. There's also a ton of evidence that we can actually bring in here from the games as well. Okay, some truly what is it? ancient game theories that are almost nine years old at this point. Mm. We talked about the origins and parentage of the character Rosalina, a space traveling right. princess from the Mario Galaxy games, who right. is quite and literally to the mother Lewis. to the stars. Those right. theories are great, by the way. They hold up really well. They're old, but man, to this day, they are some of my favorites that we've ever done. Anyway, mm. to quickly summarize here, throughout Super 
Super Mario Galaxy, Rosalina reads from a storybook about a sad little girl in search of a Luma's missing mother. Right, and no, that was her. explicitly stated, the story is likely about Rosalina herself. In right. the book, we see glimpses of Rosalina's mother, who looks an awful lot like Peach, and who also has herself hmm. Peach's earrings. We also see Rosalina's castle. So you're thinking that castle, Peach is Rosalina's that mother? the exact same silhouette as Peach's castle in most depictions. Symmetrical spires on the sides, and one large spire in the middle. Genetically, hmm. Rosalina's eye color, hair color, earlobes, and even her left-handedness would all match with Peach. <laughs> and even the author of this storybook portion wow. of the game has gone on record to say that his original intent was for Rosalina and Peach to be related. There's also a really? French translation of this story, which makes mention of a father's signature mustache. So is oh. it suspicious then that the movie goes out of its way to further the connection between Peach and other galaxies? The filmmakers are outright doing everything in their power but spelling is... out Peach's Rosalina's mom in the night sky. Additionally, the captive nihilistic Luma Lee from the movie yeah. outright says, time, like hope, is an illusion. Another point towards that old theory of iterative variance yeah, of the universe Luma the was nuts. Peach and the stars. I suspect that also, I actually, fun fact about that Luma, uh, that's actually the same Luma that runs the shops in Mario Galaxy. Like, he gives you little power-ups before the boss fight. I didn't realize that initially. I was like, that Luma looks really unique, so... But I didn't realize he was actually from the games himself. In movie three, they'll be coming to this realization of the family connection, and then there'll be a final reset of the timeline to start things all over again. Exactly what we saw with the original Mario Galaxy. And finally, that brings us to theory the number four, theory? or I guess more observation number four. As we talked yeah. about earlier, we see Mario playing Kid Icarus on right. the Nintendo Entertainment System, the very first home console that I'm Nintendo I'm guessing that means that so uh, first, uh, the Kid Icarus yourself, group so is not going to be a part of the Mario or the the movie about multiverse universe, I guess. Franchise. What's the big deal? Deal with that. Well, it's actually huge. You see, if Mario's a real person in this universe, that means that his games don't exist. Now, some version of Donkey Kong, or in this case, Jumpman, still exists in this universe. We True. see an altered version of the original Donkey Kong arcade cabinet in the Punch Out Pizzeria, with a Yeti right. in place of DK and. I mean, there were pictures of Glass Joe and Little Mac, so they could be real too. Different humans in the places of Mario and Lady, but everything that Mario as an IP has touched doesn't really seem to be a thing in this world. The existence of the hmm. Punch Out Pizzeria means that Mike Tyson's Punch Out couldn't have been a game. In fact, Mario's complete lack of acknowledgement towards any of the Mushroom Kingdom, Donkey Kong, Koopa Army, the Yoshi imagery, all of that means that basically nothing related to Mario Brothers or Yoshi's Island or okay. Donkey Kong Country exists as video games in this world. Right. Now, on the surface, that might not seem like They're much, until things. you remember that without the Mario games, there would be no Nintendo. See, when the NES hit store shelves, right. the United States was in the midst of the video game crash of 1983. Consumers didn't trust video games because there had been such a huge surplus of poorly made garbage games, like the infamous Atari version of wow, E.T. That... years before. That... What do you know? Apparently, old times had that problem too, huh? I mean, we have that problem now. That sentiment was only able to get turned around when Nintendo released the Nintendo Entertainment System, marketing the thing as more of a toy than a video game, which proved right. games really could be good, actually. Mm -hmm. The main way they proved that, the original Super Mario Bros. platformer was a pack-in title for the console. Americans only started to trust video games again when they popped in Super Mario Bros. and saw that it was a high-quality, fun game. And the numbers right. absolutely reflect this fact. The Nintendo Entertainment System Ooh, how had a many launch lineup of 17 games including okay. the likes of Kung Fu, Hogan's Alley, Gyromite, Excite Bike, right. a lot of ones that, you know, really set the world on fire, clearly. And then, of mm -hmm. course, he had the creatively titled games like Golf, Pinball, Baseball, and of course, <laughs> there was also Mario. And of that group, Mario stood head and shoulders above the rest. Of the right. NES's top five selling games, three of them are Mario games. Super mm -hmm. Mario Brothers alone, as a pack-in title for the console, sold 40 million, 40 million units. units. It is one of the top selling video games of all time. Though wow. Mario games at the top of the That's list amazing. total around 65 million units sold. The oh. only game in the top five to not be a pack-in or Mario game sold 8 million. Zelda, <laughs> Nintendo's second highest performing IP, only sold 6.5 million. And right. don't even get me started on Kid Icarus who couldn't even crack the top 30 with only 1.7 million units sold. Uh -huh. What I'm trying to say here is that without well, I mean, I've played games, it, I like the NES it. likely wouldn't have caught the public's attention, and Nintendo likely wouldn't have survived the changing era of entertainment. Heck, yeah. video gaming itself 
itself may not have existed as a medium, considering that Mario was the game that won back everyone's trust. At the very exactly. least, the industry would have likely been set back by at least a decade from where it is today. No True. Super Mario means no new revolutionary 3D video game controls with Mario 64. That right. then translates to no new 3D platformer revolution, leading to games like Banjo Kazooie, Spyro, Spyro the Dragon, and, and Ocarina of Time. No Mario Kart, no Super Smash Brothers, completely mm -hmm. omitting two of the most impactful and highest selling video game franchises of all time. And the lackluster growth of video yeah, games no, would probably incredible. also translate to differences in the Sony PlayStation and Xbox. And all of this is yeah. without even touching all the ancillary businesses like the CGI tech, all the amazing lighters and shaders and game engines that have been built yeah. off the backs of well, gaming. Things have and changed all of that over gaming the years. off it's the amazing. back of Mario. With Mario being a real guy in this world instead of a video game character, it means that okay. one of the other Nintendo IPs had to have been the one that spearheaded the revival of video gaming as we know it. And based on the fact that Mario has F-Zero posters and Star Fox replicas, but no Triforce merch, no Kirby plushie, no Samus calendar, oh. it means that none of them were made into games in this I see, so you're saying either. Kirby, in short, Samus what we're seeing in the Mario movie are gonna be real and Zelda's gonna be Kid Icarus was Zelda. the killer app for Nintendo's rebirth of gaming. All its <laughs> vertical platforming, all its eggplants, all of right. this. Oh no, we've entered into the darkest timeline. But hey, <laughs> that's just a theory. A film <laughs> theory. And cut. Given the wild success of the Mario movie yeah, and the Last of Us series, I expect we're going to be seeing a lot more of these video game tie-ins in the right. future. I mean, we're already apparently getting a Minecraft movie led by Jason Momoa. Really? And I shudder to think about what we're going to have to talk about on this channel when the FNAF movie finally comes oh, out. Oh, yeah, we'll that. So if you want to see what theories I we come know. up with when those I movies start releasing those trailers, like. smash that subscribe button like you're smashing Bowser in the face. That way you're going to be the first to see when all of those things go live. And okay. as always, my friends, I will see you next week i'll see you then uh we don't want to see this though i see so uh so the biggest topic that he was talking about was how the me was the, i mean didn't really talk about much of mario's immortality he just said that in the mushroom kingdom most people don't take injuries but when he was in the real world he did you know that honestly wasn't something i noticed initially but it's definitely something to pay attention to because i mean since characters have been sucked back into the real world as well and now that the human world knows about it i'm guessing we're gonna see like more of that dynamic i was hoping i do hope that in the sequels of these movies i hope they do really well yeah, they did well visually, but now they need to move on to more focused things like story, I think. Again, we're talking about Mario though, but I feel like if it if it's done better this one, next if it's the story is done better, then we'll definitely have some even better movies. I mean the first this one we already saw was great. I'm just ready to see them improve on that, is what I mean. But it was also interesting to notice that yeah, there were plenty of video game references that I just shook the table. But there are plenty of video game references that weren't there, but were also were there. Like, Kir Kirby wasn't there, Sam wasn't there, Zelda. I did notice, like, Duck Hunt, Kid Icarus, Punch-Out. I feel like, yes, some of these characters are actually going to be semi-real and semi-not real. Like, some are going to be just games, the others are going to actually be a part of it. I mean, a lot of people were talking about how they're making a Smash Brothers, like, universe, like, multiverse, I mean. Where inevitably we're going to see a Smash Brothers movie with all these characters, a la Avengers Endgame. And that would be pretty cool to see. I mean, like, in the if in the next decade that happens, that would be amazing. I'm very happy with how video game movies do over have done over the years. Pokemon did great. Sonic did great with both of its movies. And Mario movie did great, too. So I'm curious to see what video game movies are made next. I hope they make a Zelda movie or a Kirby movie, because honestly, that'd be cute and amazing. As for, I mean, Kirby had an anime show that I thought was pretty good. I, I, by the way, if, if they make a Kirby movie, they have got to have King DDD's Kirby right back at your voice. Come on. That voice, I'm sorry, is a staple for DDD, and you cannot tell me otherwise. You You cannot. Also, Meta Knight with a Spanish accent would also be great, too. <laughs> Come on, it'd be pretty easy, to. And as for Zelda Link, I'm curious to see how that would work. I mean, you could have the same formula, but 
I mean, how Zelda works is that they reincarnate with different people playing as Zelda and Link, but always having the same Ganon, typically. Which, again, allows for a lot of different scenarios, which you could play around with game-wise, but I don't know how it would work movie-wise. I mean, it could work pretty well. We could have more movies focus on maybe Link and Zelda's dynamic, while also having, like, more... Other movies focus on trying to prepare for the ultimate fight. You know, kind of like how like Harry Potter in its last movie had like two parts in the Deathly Hallows. I mean, that could be something that would really help. Overall, I think that these were some pretty good theories. I mean, the one about Peach being a star, I honestly do not believe. Sorry, man. I, it just, it, it seems too oddballed for me. I mean, I've, I see where you're getting at, but I don't think it, it just doesn't feel good enough of an explanation to feel real to me. But, I mean, your facts are there, so it probably is, but I still find it hard to believe despite that. I am proud that you actually got correct that, yeah, Bowser was going to be singing. I honestly didn't know, but I'm so glad he did. Overall, I'm excited for that Nintendo's getting back in the movies. I'm hoping that they'll improve on this. And I can't wait to see what video game movies they make. So I hope you guys liked my reaction. I hope you guys stuck around this long for me to talk about all this. That being said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.